to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. There are many of us right now, what you are writing on, what you are writing on, it's a piece of paper that you could not even tear orderly. That is a piece of paper is an issue. But the discipline to just tear it and create synergy. You don't have that patience. You just tear everything. And you are writing something that will change your destiny. You're not excellent. You see, excellence is a culture. It starts from your life. You don't try to pretend it outside. You eat, you don't wash the plate. You are not excellent. You wash the plate, you don't throw away the dirty water. You are not excellent. You use the same soap to bath, wash, clean, mop, or the same rag, your sponge case for your shoe. You are not excellent. Are we together? Don't laugh at anybody. God is speaking to you. You enter to bath like I was teaching school of ministry students. Some of you bath in one minute. You, they ask you a question. You are answering it while you are bathing. You will think you are flushing the toilet. You just hear, Shua! and you are out. No, you are not excellent. Sir, you are not excellent. Are we together? Wearing one boxer for two weeks, you are not excellent. Wearing one torn singlet, smelling it to see if it's still usable, you are not excellent. Ironing clothes with sweat on it and seeing it rise and you are, you are not excellent. Are we together? You are laughing. Ask those who this thing has cost them so much. Do you know just there are people someone like me i eat emotionally before my mouth touches it presentation matters as much as what it is you don't cook nonsense and say the most important thing is your body no why did god give me eyes <laughs> are we together now you have a restaurant i carry your spoon somebody took gary with the spoon and you obviously they were washing it in a hurry and you see the trace why should i remain there let's tell ourselves the truth tonight success systems there's oil all around they have to call you madam come and clean this table now you just send one lady who frowns around comes out as if everybody has offended her just pushes the rag across the table <laughs> pours the water on you and goes madam give me rice beans towel and one other part she goes to go and bring swallow no attention to details after 20 or i'm showing us little things no attention to details iron someone's cloth you go and burn the cloth you don't know how much the cloth is i say sir uh, i i decided I, I remember one guy who wanted me to start um, doing dry cleaning with him and so he said he wanted to do so i said okay let me try you i gave him a suit he returned it after like one month i don't know what he did on it i said thank you I gave it to somebody and I knew that even him, he knew that he had lost that opportunity forever. Let's stop saying God is not looking down on us. I'm showing you how God comes but we cannot receive because we don't understand his systems. One day, I will cook for the governor. Who are you? With what you are doing now? You are not training yourself. The governor is not an idiot. The government house is not a zoo. If you want to cook well, you must be competent. Don't throw anything at anybody. Are we together now? How about barbers? How about barbers? How about barbers? 
there are people who pay as much as four five thousand just to bob their hair you think they are lavishing money they are not ready to risk their hair are we together you bring out a clipper you don't even know whether it's sharp or not you injure someone all around because you are babbing don't don't laugh these are ways that anything can take you to the top if it's excellent it's not just shell it's not just oil and gas it's a determination to be thorough pay attention to details listen to the instructions no assumption you met somebody god is introducing a great businessman to you about to take a risk with you he says call me by 2 p.m tomorrow it's by 1 30 you sleep are you a serious person you get up and start ringing his phone by four i say no you have to pray apostle this guy is not picking my my call why should he pick your call maybe that guy is in church for evening service maybe he's a deacon you are ringing by seven you are ringing his number he told you call me by two someone tells you i want to give you a job i want to help you come by two you stroll carelessly by 2 30 and say uncle just to let you know i'm around you know you won't get the job because some jobs are the lives of people are dependent on it excellence you have one shoe you polish it you comb your hair well don't dress around like a thief going to the house of god you look smart say i'm not i'm not a man of god it doesn't mean you should be like that you are smart it's not about having money excellence your notebooks you bind them well if they are torn you fix them you fix your bible are we together now your environment is neat very neat we come into your kitchen we see it neat we come into your toilet we see it neat we come into the living room we see it neat that's excellence don't say we were not trained that way that's why god is bringing you koinonia is a school and you are learning are we together is god helping us the law of competence how to be competent quickly now that i've challenged your mediocrity how do i become competent number one you must have a reference you cannot be excellent and competent when there is no reference a reference means an individual that reflects your aspiration there must be someone even if you plan to surpass that level there must be a reference oh i want to become a great worship minister i have a reference like don moen now that gives you a standard to start climbing the ladder when you become like don moen you now earn the right to go higher but not when you are down i want to be great like who i'm unique oh yes you are unique but you need a reference the bible says ask for the ancient parts that means someone walked in it before you are you hearing what i'm saying now you must have a reference look at me hold on mike if you do not have a reference for ministry for business you want to become a great man of god like who who represents a model because that's the life you are going to understudy that's going to be your case study i want to become a business mogul like who you just mentioned one hilarious name how many videos of that person do you have have you ever gone for a seminar organized by that person no competence and excellence is based on a reference I always challenge every department in this ministry to have a modern ministry whose whose um whose who reflect their aspiration so every department has a reference that they can look up to for inspiration references are important because we draw inspiration from them If your reference is small your outcomes will be small you see when your references are people of mediocrity you will hit it too fast even when you don't do much and so you will not aspire to rise 
Number two, how to be competent. Submit yourself to mentorship. Now that you have references, I told you last week that mentorship and training is the only way to be successful. Trust me when I say this. Mentorship is not listening to a man. Mentorship is submitting yourself to build the character, the traits, the habits, the principles, and the secrets of a man. Submitting yourself to build the character, the traits, the habits, the principles, the secrets. I take it again. The character, the traits, the habits, the principles, the secrets of a man. That's what you do when you, are, when you are receiving mentorship. It's not just to go and package yourself for nothing. No. You sit down. Why is this person getting these results? What is he doing that I'm not doing? Why does Benny Hinn stand on stage and 40 people rise up on the wheelchair and he has not started praying? Is it that God is unfair to me? God, you called me to have the healing anointing. But what is it about? What's the difference between me and Benny Hinn? Then you study his prayer life. You may never have that close access to him. So you take advantage of his materials. You know, a lot of people call me and say, Sir, I want you to mentor me. Can I be calling you anytime? I say, no. He says, Sir, so how do you mentor me? I said, that's why I'm teaching. I'm teaching all the time. There's Koinonia Radio. Our teachings are free. Listen, they say I have it. I say, that's why you will never learn. Mentorship is not listening to a radio program or a TV program. I've shared with a school of ministry students. There are times it takes me three days to watch a one hour video. Three days to watch a one hour video. Because almost every two, two minutes I'm stopping. This man said this. I have to listen. That's mentorship. You submit yourself to read between the lines. Ah, he just said the power of God will touch somebody outside and somebody was shouting. How did he know? Was that the word of knowledge? Man, this guy is powerful. That's excitement. That's not mentorship. There are too many excited people who just see results and don't know the secrets. I was told, I don't know if it's true or not, but I was told one great man of God, Bishop um, Abioye, that one time one man said he wanted to, you know, find out the secret of his prayer life. And he said, fine, let's pray. And that they prayed after a long time. The guy was yawning. He wanted to sleep. And then Bishop Abioye told him, okay, we've given thanks. Now let's pray. And the guy was almost dying. <laughs> If that story is true, that guy is not wise. What do you think the anointing is? You think the anointing is a charm? Even a charm, go and ask a herbalist the price for a charm that can throw a man down. Not give him miracles, just push a man against gravity. The secret of great men is in their stories. Pay attention when a great man is giving you examples. Pay attention when a great man is giving you stories. They are trying to bring a principle. Many people laugh at the stories. Parables and mysteries enshrined in stories. You can see the stories and laugh. And be raptured by the humor of the communication. And miss out on the meaning of it. I'm not against laughing. Be happy. But you must be able to see when others are looking. Are we together? Submit yourself to mentorship. Number three. Understand, believe, and live by the principles learned. How to be competent? One, you must have a reference to submit yourself to mentorship. Three, understand, believe, and live by the principles learned. It's not enough to just say, I know he told me this. Understand what you have been taught. Believe what you have been taught. Let me tell you something. I have discovered something with the body of Christ many people who supposedly submit themselves to mentorship don't believe half of what they have been told when you don't believe a man don't ever listen to him for mentorship because you'll be wasting your time you have a right to vet a man and do you believe this don't sit down and you are not complete you are not producing any result and you are there and someone is teaching on the anointing i say no i don't just because he made a mistake with one Greek word, he said, no, I have the, the modern lexicon. Oga, 
who, who did you get out of a wheelchair whose eye opened that's the summary of this thing we're talking about whose eye opened whose life changed you prophesied on somebody everything was wrong sit down sit down don't just say the person does not have faith you are you are you are, you are messing up if it's not working it's not working sit down when i see people who communicate dimensions that are not at work in my life even if i don't exactly understand what they are saying i sit down and try to discern the spirit of what they are saying because sometimes it may be that they are not able to communicate maybe a businessman a smart businessman who is let's say um, he's somebody who is not very he just used street sense but in that street sense he kept acquiring principles now he may be sharing business secrets he may not intelligently articulate it like someone who went to harvard business school will but you can discern the spirit of his communication not to sit down and say Kai, this carpenter now wow. but he's the number one carpenter do you know why rich people are coming to him maybe the man every two two months he will package a seed and squeeze it and take it to his reverend that may be his edge while you are listening to him one day in passing he will reveal a secret and say that's my pastor let me tell you something see that man that man is powerful say talk to me say i used to the only thing i used to make before was coughing and then one day he called me prophesied to me now i make bed i even have a timber shed now he did not say it intelligently but you have picked a principle Years ago, I was in Abuja and I took a cab. When I took a cab, we were discussing with the driver because sometimes I crack jokes with them. Say, ah, oh God, you poor enjoying this. Ah, my chama and Abba, I'm not enjoying. And then it, we we're talking about money. And then later the man said, oh God, you know, say this money, eh? That the thing has a spirit. And then I started listening to him. He said, do you know that he tried to build a house in Abuja? He tried and tried, could not build. But he said he saved and took the money out of Abuja and in four months he built. I discerned something that guy was saying. He was communicating a deep mystery. But because of his, the barrier in communication. Are we together now? Listen. If you don't have results in your life, you are not a colleague to the person who has results. Sit down. Humble yourself. Believe learn if you don't believe it will not work for you you don't only believe the principle you must believe the communicator are we together now yes. a woman didn't go to school she's taking care of 10 of her children and you are there i am a lawyer i'm a barrister and the madam is saying let me tell you this i flogged my child from age one to seven when my child was in my womb i was anointing my womb with oil now he's not saying you should repeat the anointing discern the mystery of what she was saying she may now tell you that i took one night vigil for all my children before they were born you are now learning secrets you apply the same thing and change any dull head in your life to an intelligent child no matter what the limitations are listen one of the greatest ways of receiving mentorship is observation don't wait for a great man to tell you everything. There are people who look and say, ah, is this all? There are people who have never seen but observe. You observe. When the power of God is about to come, how does he behave? Observation. Observation. Jesus was speaking to them and saying, you can look at the clouds and through observation know that it is rainy season. You can learn a lot through observation every time you enter the presence of a great man be observant you see him keeping laws oh somebody disappoints him and he doesn't quarrel the person in public he says okay that's all right we'll go and see oh oh god the poor man now wants to kneel down and says all right let's go you are learning you are the one who quarrels your house help in front of everybody and before you know it they start calling the house help the name you are calling you insult your wife in front of everybody don't mind this useless woman very soon your friend will say that's why he's calling you a useless woman because you are making men reflect what you are communicating principles say i receive grace to be observant say it again i receive grace to be observant and then number four the fourth way to be competent remain connected 
never disconnect from those who lift you up it's foolishness a time may come in your life you feel you don't need them again in terms of the dynamics of what they are teaching you but that's when great men fall no matter how tall a skyscraper is it remains for as long as he's still connected to the ground there's no skyscraper that says i am i am 500 meters into the air i can disconnect no sir are we together yes are you learning let me give us two more laws and then we'll be done is god helping us <laughs> you know look at this let me tell you this if you're a businessman listen twice to what i'm teaching you and everybody's in business i hope you know business is simply solving a problem for an agreed reward it's not wearing suits and sitting in business class business is solving a problem for an agreed reward simple most men think men of god don't know anything about business you know when they look at men of god they just feel we're just daft people you are praying and fasting you don't know anything see see still this pride we are talking about what do you think managing people is what do you think managing resources are what do you think multiplying them is are we together now the law of the mind number what number four am i right five thank you number one hey, i'm the one teaching listen number one is the law of relationships am i right number two the law of value number three the law of competence and excellence oh that's true how to be competent is part of it number four the law of the mind jesus the law of the mind the law of the mind proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 is god helping us as i teach you you should be seeing the loopholes what laws you are not keeping that is deactivating the systems of success in your life 23 verse 7 proverbs for as he thinketh in his heart it's interchange with the word mind so is he not so he will be as you are thinking you already are the bible creates your um references your physical reality to what is happening in your mind the bible says in proverbs 4 23 guard your heart proverbs 4 23 guard your heart with all diligence it says for from out of it are the issues of life guard it it is a guard your head it is a guard your legs guard your heart you don't cover yourself the worst is you catch cold and mosquitoes can disturb you but you don't protect your mind you will fail in life listen being filled with the holy spirit does not negate the need to transform and build your mind the law of the mind what does it state as it is in your mind so it will be in your life as it is in your mind so it will be in your life trust me your physical reality is a messless reflection of the summation of your understanding your thought patterns as it is in your mind so it will be in your life a great mentor says you become what you think about how true you become what you think about your life is a reflection of your most dominant thoughts your life is a reflection the quality of your life today is a reflection of your understanding about god about life the quality of your life today is a reflection of your paradigms are we getting blessed the mind is a mystery that i want all of us we've had several teachings here on the mind but it's important for you to understand the mind my life changed this law alone changed me like day and night the law of the mind that my the quality of my life today 
it's a reflection of my mind your mind is a miracle your mind is a gold mine it literally is literally is literally is write this down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden full stop write it down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden it will grow any seed planted and watered it will grow any seed that is planted and watered in our greek science they teach that there are several kinds of soils i don't know if they've discovered others but as far as i remember they taught loamy soil clay soil what other one sandy soil and every other auxiliary one that comes as a combination of them your mind is in is a perfect garden sustaining the ability to grow any seed that is planted and watered no matter what is planted in your mind if it lands on that soil and you water it and i'll tell you how to water it it must grow unfortunately it does not grow in your mind it grows in your life you plant it in your mind it grows in your life look at your life the summation of everything in your life your finances your peace your understanding your excellence your relationships everything in your life is a sum total of your paradigm it's an uncomfortable truth many people will not want to admit but it's true apostle nothing is working no friends in my life no favor in my life there is an inaccurate understanding or a poor understanding you are sustaining listen your ignorance is a seed you can plant it in your mind and it will bring you a bumper harvest let me tell you what ignorance produces pain frustration disappointment these are all harvests of the seed of ignorance it's rainy season all the time in your mind your mind has no dry season it's rainy season all the time capacity to produce anything there's no barrenness with the mind there's only wrong seeds planted in the mind and i'm standing here only because you made you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because Sing it one more time that can happen to you outside of salvation is not the healing of your body listen carefully there are people with no legs who are changing the world there are people with no eyes who are changing the world but there is nobody with an unfruitful mind who can change the world the worst thing that can happen to a man is not his eyes missing not the legs not the mouth there is a scientist i don't know his name who had a, a disease that literally crippled him yet he's one of the smartest scientists in the world nothing else in your life is worth crying for till you lose your mind the worst sickness in life is madness not blindness not blindness madness if i give you one billion and i make you mad have i blessed you please talk to me yes 
there are people who have built empires in fact there's a book like that empires of the mind and it's worth reading very powerful book you have to learn and understand this mystery called the mind many believers are not interested like some of you probably are as i'm talking now you're oh mind bring another thing now look you will never be great i'm sharing you with you the principles that I have lived by. You have seen the anointing and the grace of God upon my life. I'm showing you the other sides to these success systems. Because many people just think, oh, these people are just privileged. No, sir. These are systems. They make your life and your outcome predictable. You never truly rise above your mindset. You never truly rise underline the word truly you never truly rise above your mindset you may jump above it for a while but i assure you you will never truly rise your life will only rise to match the level of your mindset no matter how you manipulate it your mindset is what shows the quality of your life I wrote down something here I want you to listen to. I don't know if you can have the speed to write it, but listen first. If you attempt to change your life without changing your mind, your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back and reflect the level of your mind. You know how you pull a rubber ring? You can pull it and it becomes elastic and you think it will remain like that. The moment you push it what happens it returns back that's how many people are if you attempt to change your life change your shoe <laughs> change your suit change your hair change watch change cars and all these mundane things that we use around to prove that you are successful you attempt to change them first without changing your mind your mind will cause them to disappear until your life returns back to the level of your mind see i have seen this thing work too many times have you i've given this example here i believe have you seen someone that you used a dress for one year and people will think you just sold it because the dress is reflecting the quality of your mindset that maintenance culture of excellence reflected on the dress carry it as a gift and give a tongue-talking careless believer who is not prepared to work on their minds give them two weeks you know what you see the shirt will reflect their mind they won't iron it they won't wash it the color will change they won't care it will tear they won't sew it later on you will check and see that they now use it to wash a car two months hollandis that you spend money to buy you decided to sew it in two months they are using it to wash motorcycle that's the mindset so that person's mindset changed that fabric to come back to the level in my life i've had the privilege by the grace of god to bless people financially usually they come and they tell you sir i have an idea i have this if you only give me this money i will never return back and i look at them and i say what is your idea of success because you think all you need to be great and I'm correcting many of us here right now because there are people about to make that mistake. You think all you need is 100,000, 200,000. If it left you, it is not your hand that took it away. It's your mind that took it away. So you must correct something in your mind first before having it back. Are we together now? The most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the most difficult person to help the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the moment you find a man who is resistant to change in terms of mindset you have found a man who has defined himself as being hopeless I have seen great people rise and didn't pay attention to rise first in the mind i've seen people inherit money i've seen people win lottery millions of dollars and their mindsets created behavioral patterns that drove everything away from them 
having physical things without a transformed mind is like having a jeep without knowing how to drive it's not if you will have accident it's when are we together now you can manage to navigate your way driving nonsense and arrive safely and then one day you decide to pack passengers and travel that's the day you die you see that and you can die the death of a fool listen packaging without mental upgrade will lead to frustration write it nigerians packaging without mental upgrade will lead to i was almost saying like lead to nigeria will lead to frustration packaging you know what we call packaging paying attention to the physical form now it is important appearance is important appearance is the seed for acceptance so don't don't ignore appearance is important because it is the seed for acceptance joseph had to shave his beard to stand before pharaoh so acceptance is the seed i mean appearance is the seed for acceptance however packaging having physical things around you now listen many of us young people have a very big there's a big mistake we're making everybody wants to buy a car everybody wants to buy a shoe oh that great man is wearing Versace is wearing Gucci wearing Louis Vuitton and me too I want to get all these designers I want to and then you now try and save and save and beg and steal and raise money and then buy the shoe buy the hair buy everything so physically you look let me tell you something a great man and a great name are not the same if your name is greater than you you are in trouble you must rise to get to the level of your name i will make your name great does not mean you are great it's, it's a disappointing thing for your name to be greater than you god makes your name great as an act of mercy so that you can quickly catch up are we blessed the law of the mind there's too much packaging packaging i know people who years ago as students were behaving like bankers a student will buy a suit of forty thousand. a student will not cook no 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 i don't have that time i don't uh, i don't like okra soup do you have that option no whoever pays creates the rules you cannot somebody cannot pay and you say i don't like okra there are people who try to live a life you have not built your mind there are so many people holding briefcases today arrogant people you see them they move around wearing suits loitering our streets you ask them what do we do say it depends on which which company i have five companies uh, i'm the ceo of this what do you do well we are into logistics what do you mean logistics logistics is like saying i'm studying science what do you do i'm into real real estate what do you know about real estate well my uncle gave me one land to sell you are not into real estate yet. are we together now i am this i'm into that I'm, I'm i'm one of in fact by the grace of god it's just that i don't want to talk too loud i'm one of the top fashion people in this this town who knows you who has patronized you we make too much noise whereas our results cannot match it it is better for people to have a low expectation over you and then your results shock them than to make so much noise i can cook for one thousand people just give me this money i know what i'm saying is it cooking what is there in cooking then the food is smelling smoke all around burnt the meat burnt the food burnt everything packaging is good but have content have content build your mind buy the truth buy books buy materials i can spend the whole night teaching on the mind focus on changing your mind brothers and sisters and i promise you your life will change don't don't get into this pressure of living a fake life 
if all you have today is gary take it with honor use your 2000 naira buy a bible buy a book read pay for seminars you are buying the truth you are investing your destiny yes i know you have one trouser the trouser is torn around sew it with honor let them laugh at you a day will come you will own a clothing line all these things somebody just finishes a graduate you are moving around when you are going somewhere you go and change ten thousand naira um you have twenty thousand savings you change twenty thousand to five five hundred naira new note and you just go and dash over and say well this is part of what god has done now you take look at the fake life social media has helped us to live very fake lives now there are positive aspects of it people snap near cars that are not their own they stand near a plane and snap they do all kinds so you don't even know it's better for you to know where you are so that you can rise there is a way you live a life that is too fake you don't even know that is fake again are we together you go to a house that is not near your house stand in front of the gate just put one leg and snap and then you go around now let me tell you what you, every time you create expectations that are higher than your capacity what you do is that you cause men to expect more from you are we together yes packaging without mental upgrade will always lead to frustration there are many pastors i love them i love the body of christ but you see a lot of people this guy will wear suit you think if you match the ground every wheelchair will stand up wear the suit wear tie wear all kinds of things pocket square all kinds of things bible ipad another book one protocol one for whoever it is that is standing by the side and you hold the mic one scripture you can quote one prayer you can pray man of god i don't know what to do about my finances as well god will attend to your needs look at the answer he's giving no knowledge of the principles of the kingdom yet you are the first to spend all your money so every you go to a meeting like this you come for koinonia stand outside and snap and use it to publicize your church you say come there is an overflowing abundance of people there are four members in your church it's not a thing to laugh at god is going to lift you you see people live all kinds of fake lives you don't know what is true and what is not true you are selling rappers it's all right but you go somewhere to one big boutique and snap yourself and say me in one of my shops you are lying it is the truth that sets free brothers and sisters not everybody dances to a fake life there are people who can see you and say i know you are starting but i'm taking the risk to lift you and support you are we together yes say i receive grace to work on my mind first ladies some of you spend all kinds of hilarious amount on hair on rings on clothes on hands you are creating an impression are you working no well how much is your salary per month it just comes as as a favor opens up doors for me anyhow so why are you living like that a restaurant that everybody there is a ceo you too you enter there number one you have not grown to that level so you don't even know that they don't call people the see with every lifting life teaches you the protocol of that realm when you force yourself into that realm you don't know the protocol of that realm if you have truly gotten to that level let me tell you the justice system of god is such that you will learn the day you can get to a restaurant where it's a buffet you will already know the precepts of that level be careful let me speak to some of us here who are leaders business leaders ministry people be careful as you attempt to lift people don't be so sympathetic about people that you lift them beyond their current level of dealing with god in a bid to help them you will expose them to dimensions they are not prepared for and it will destroy them sometimes you see people crying somebody just comes to you and says ah, i have a crusade yeah money is not coming say really oh yeah bring your account two million god is trying to teach him how to trust you destroy that lecture 
you gave the guy two million do you know what he's going to say he will arrow he was begging you crying but he will arrogantly stand before his members and say if you have ever doubted that there's oil on my head go and check my bank account now that guy has not learned anything most people will use your help to prove that they had faith they didn't know you helped them me i don't pray i don't pray things just happen in my life i'm, I'm like that i mean all this i don't waste my time praying because you, somebody's you have been reaping somebody's seed the day your farm will be open you will see that uh, what they call that thing shifting cultivation that you have to allow a farm for it because you have allowed it bush following what they call all those agri terminologies you have to sit down for years tilling the ground you left for a long time corporate success is good for the organization but dangerous for individuals because you won't know who is really producing the result see the, let, let me let me encourage you everyone especially the workers in this ministry we share our success now i've taught in this ministry the principles of shared dominion if somebody says today apostle you are very anointed we share it i'm not anointed alone there were people who made that possible however be careful lest you hide in the midst of crowd to say we are moving forward are you moving forward that's the danger with things like group work 10 people can do an assignment only two are serious the remaining two will sleep all of them will get nine over ten and the other person will come and say Kai, god is faithful you are not smart you are not learning in the office they give assignments and they come and give everybody bonuses and you are rejoicing yet you are not growing enjoy corporate success but vet yourself to make sure you are an active contributor that your input is in that equation of success how is the mind renewed quickly if this is what we can take we will just stop here how is the mind renewed we need to learn how to transform the mind number one a recognition transformation starts with a recognition that your old ideas cannot take you to your destiny transformation of the mind starts with a recognition that your old ideas the ideas that are currently resident within your mind are not sufficient to take you to the place of destiny that's the first key a recognition that something i know now is limiting me or something i do not know is limiting me that's the first step whoever can recognize that that is my place of destiny but as it is where I am now cannot take me there leads us to point number two the second key to the renewal of the mind is access to new ideas access to revelation access to useful information you can't think the way you are thinking now and rise as a pastor as a businessman as a career person as a student as a family man as a wife as a mother as a child no your thought process thus far is what brought you where you are so you have to think i look at my life today and i look at it maybe five six seven eight years i look at the things i knew and i'm surprised that i could even rise with that level of knowledge because compared to what i know now i was in total ignorance i probably would have argued then but truly speaking i would say i was in total ignorance understanding the systems of god now i'm in shock that's why i glorify god because i see his mercy all the way there is something you can know that will take your church to the next level there is something koinonia can know now that can open us to a new season see leaders learn this you are a pastor businessman leader whatever you are listen to me your ministry or organization will rise and stop at the level of thinking of the leader are we together it is it is it is a very sincere statement you are a ceo of a group that group will only rise to match your level of understanding and stop there because you are the chief legislator of that organization if i stop growing as a person spiritually intellectually otherwise 
koinonia will rise to the level of my understanding and stop there we will only be recycling knowledge so whilst god is granting me grace to feed you with truth i myself am a student of higher mantles greater graces uncommon leadership and i mean it uncommon leadership you No, know, sometimes when i sit down and read these books or watch these people i sit down and i try to say my god what constructed their understanding to be this flawless access to new ideas number three repetition of the ideas in your mind until conviction is established the third way to renew your mind is not just to have access to ideas but those ideas must be repeated until conviction is established faith comes by hearing and hearing that you heard it once does not mean you have built conviction there are messages i've listened to more than 1500 times one message god is my witness and i lie not the goal is not just to hear i have understood the principle i wish we had time i would have taught you how the mind works right generally speaking there are two dimensions to the mind there is what we call the conscious mind and what we call the subconscious mind the conscious part of the mind is the area that connects with your senses your physical senses that's where you do your thinking that's where you do your reasoning that's where you do your analysis unfortunately that's not where your behavior comes from that's not where your convictions come from that's where your intention comes from the conscious part of your mind then there is the subconscious part of your mind that's the seat of conviction whatever enters your subconscious mind must manifest in your life so the bible says in genesis chapter 11 right when you read from verse 5 and 6 the bible says god came down nimrod the son of cush gathered the people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves and then the bible says that god said in verse 5 can you give it to us please genesis 11 and verse 5 genesis 11 and verse 5 the bible says that god said there were, he came down to see and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded hold on they had not started building they were mobilizing themselves but the bible says god came down to see the city that has already been built once you build it in your mind you build it in your life so says god himself verse 6 and the lord said behold the people is one and they all have one language and this they begin to do listen and now nothing everybody say nothing who is talking here god nothing will be restrained from them not which they intended which they imagined to do it first happens in your mind i saw these days years ago the mental level i am now the physical reality is not yet the reflection tomorrow will tell you my thought process what you are we are enjoying today was yesterday's thinking are you hearing what i'm saying now your family is a reflection of the thinking of your father and mother it's a reflection of the ideas your life now is a reflection of your ideas listen the subconscious mind there's something very powerful about it the subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination wow it cannot distinguish between what is imagined and what is real in the world of your subconscious mind whether you are looking at this or imagining it it interprets it as real that's why the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or because your imagination is a request your imagination is a request you are crying out to your destiny to come so the bible says philippians chapter 4 please give us verse 8 philippians chapter 4 verse 8 <sighs> thank you jesus finally brethren in light of the fact that your destiny is a sum total of your thought pattern he said whatsoever things are what true 
whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise what's the assignment don't just pray think on these things think on these things think on these things think on these things brothers and sisters i think on many things when i look at you i think of how you will be not how you are now no that's why there's nobody i look at and conclude over no no matter how you are when i look at you my eyes are seeing your today but my spirit my mind has captured your tomorrow i look at my life today and i've already seen when the nations will come and worship ah. our hearts our prayer is to see the nations worship our desire and our prayer is to sing your praise from the ends of the earth that we'd want mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our hearts and our desires to see the nations worship no leader enters a future he cannot see son of man what seest thou businessman what seest thou my brother my sister tonight what do you see I see pain in my family I see divorce I see the fact that I've been delayed be careful you are programming your mind to reproduce that hallelujah are we together pray in one minute pray in one minute and say lord change my vision i have allowed life to give me wrong perceptions and i'm programming my life wrongly pray pray will soon stop but i want you to get this law it's important what you see your perception he looked at a weak man Gideon and he said I see a mighty man of value brothers and sisters since I was nothing and I didn't have anything I saw a great destiny that's what I see I know what I see in the glory and the power I see miracles, that's my life. I'm a sign and wonder. It's in the glory and the power. I see miracles, signs and wonders. ago years ago i would go to our boys quarters in the night alone i never knew my mother was watching me i would get a stick and i was seen these days i was preaching i would stand i would just go imaginary in the air and say in the name of jesus rise up from the wheelchair that's what i was doing and i would feel the anointing because you see your the holy spirit works through your mind I told you your mind doesn't care whether it's imagination or not job said the thing i feared most came upon me i thought about it accident accident until a car killed me all i see is a great destiny that's what i see for myself 
all i see is koinonia rising from glory to glory i never see bomb blast i never see trouble i see myself as a leader over men of influence i have never seen impossibility in my life and i'm not just i'm not joking i said this when i could not buy a shoe they seen the glory and the power i see miracles signs and wonders i mean the glory and the power i'm a living miracle and a sign and wonder listen you must stop looking down on yourself many of you say why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing that's why they execute it you imagine a vain thing you imagine failure i am nothing i graduated with third class can anything good come out of nazareth i can't speak well i am too old oh come on now oh come on now we're talking about the god of heaven the one who can change people listen listen someone asked me one day and said apostle god has blessed you so much with gifted people how do you get them and i told him i see them i see a service conducted by music ministers who as individuals are international figures you have been allowing the devil plant nonsense in your mind there are ladies here whereas there is esther in you vashti is calling you your destiny is calling you but your yesterday is pulling you back remember you failed you failed jam five times what is the definition of a failure then you submit to it the moment you submit to it you destroy yourself listen every great man is a man who changed his mind literally right from the time i was having bread bread i will i will cut the bread and put granite in the middle i knew that a day will come i will feed nations ask Ejimi. we had a song ask and i'll give the nations to you oh lord that was our song that's the cry of my heart Distant shores and the islands will sing your life as it rises on to the heart of kings i saw myself i knew that there was an anointing every apostle was connected to kings i found it from scripture and i said no there is a mantle upon my life there are people here from our first crusades we will go and greet kings go and greet the kings in the land it was a seed listen tomorrow will never appear till you call it you will call it your mind is a fruitful part of your destiny the holy spirit is crippled if your mind says yes no demon can say no believe me hallelujah listen the lord gave me a very great testimony i think it was the day before yesterday or yesterday something happened and um it's something I had seen in my spirit, I had seen in my mind. And I would not see it physically. And then the Lord gave me a very big miracle. When it manifested and I looked at it, it was exactly what I had seen in the spirit. And I said, this God, believe him. Did you hear what I said? 
I'm going to teach you the law of faith. I thought we would have more time. There are many laws to teach you. Brothers and sisters, when you activate these things, by next week when you are done, I'm going to spend the night before next week praying all the oils that will be used. I will lie down and pray on it. When we are done, that oil, as it comes on your head, you will activate systems. My, my, listen, my brother, my sister, it will shock you. This life you see, this life you see is a living miracle. It's a product of understanding. This is what dominion is. It's not guesswork. I saw myself walking in the anointing. I saw it. I saw shadows killing the sick. I saw it. It's not some vain nonsense imagination. I believe it. The only audience in my vision, yet I pulled it down. And it will cause nations to see it. You are the first to live in your future. And then I speak it. Lord, it will happen. I will stand before kings. They will come, Gentiles. I saw a ministry that was zero, zero debt. Zero debt. Owing no man, nothing as a ministry, dead or alive. I saw it. Where did the money come from? Your mind. There is nobody giving any guarantee anywhere. There are people frowning. My uncle didn't give me 10 naira. Nobody's uncle promises him anything. Leave all those dependence, careless dependence. Everything comes from above. It comes through men, not from men. From God, through men to you. Men are not your source, they are channels. It comes from God. We are going to pray. Is someone angry? Are you seeing how you have authorized? I've only taught you four laws. Some of you have missed it in relationships. Some of you have missed it. Your gift is not speaking. Some of you mediocrity. Just these four laws alone are enough to open your destiny. See, God instructed me to teach you this series because God wants to roll away shame. Shame. He has taken all the pain. You've taken all the lamentation. You've taken all disappointment. You've taken all my sorrow. You have taken all my sadness. You've taken all limitations. You've taken all the pain. You've taken all the shame. You have been me yours. The highest praise to the King. some of your family members would have been had they known these laws they destroyed relationships and it has grounded them some of them the last time they worked was 1997 no door open till today sincere well-meaning believers but they have not understood the systems of the kingdom nobody is born with understanding you buy the truth i want you to lift your voice and prophesy i found my way i found my way I found my way. I found my way out of misery.
Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I begin to live my life from the standpoint of these laws. I engage them. I receive grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace. Grace to engage these laws. to engage his Lord. Hallelujah. You know that song, right? That Nathaniel Basi song. Just sing it once. I want us to sing it. Let the devil know that we're singing. for two minutes I want you to forget where you are now forget what you cannot eat now I want you to see a bright future draw from that future and start prophesying I'm coming to you I'm coming to you I'm coming to you say back and forth from the heaven higher no devil stops me in the name of Jesus add one last prayer our time is gone listen we are going to pray there is a spirit that can destroy all these things you have had it's called the spirit of fear apostle will it work are you joking the laws that founded the universe these are not scientific laws they were not invented no the very laws listen God told Job in chapter 38 verse 33 he says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth we are not talking about what we are guessing these are not cunningly devised fables these are the secrets 
the secret age long secret i like you right now to challenge the spirit of fear call it by name and drive it from your life i open the door and i ask you out of my life out of my life god has not given me the spirit of fear that goal is achievable by the Spirit of God is with your tears you will stand here testifying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ listen don't ever call anything impossible you are not dealing with an intelligent man you are dealing with God if you don't fear man fear God are we together to ask whether the laws will work is to mock God it is sin it is sin it's not only bad it is seen you hear what i'm saying there is no amount of money you need that you'll be getting it for the first time there is no amount of breakthrough you are looking for 
No, not for your small shop to doubt God. Not for your CGPA. Not for your graduation. Take away the fears and focus and say, Lord, I trust you. Let God be true and all men liars. He said, God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that he should repent. I say it again. Every hanging prophecy that is over your life, that the devil is trying to make it look like it will not come to pass. I release an anointing now. I command that it comes to pass now. Let it come to pass. I release the grace for performance. The grace for performance. The grace for performance. I command it to come to pass. The grace for performance. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise for tonight. We honor you because you are building us. We will experience strange dimensions of triumph in the name of Jesus. You're standing here tonight and you're saying, man of God, I do not have a relationship with Jesus. I will not tell lies. I see the move of the spirit in this place and I need Jesus. Please keep standing, everyone. Our time is gone. We're rounding up. I need Jesus. Or you're saying, man of God, as I heard you speak, I knew that I was lacking in my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I have come here tonight with my heart open. I've been lying to myself, but tonight I'm ready to tell the truth. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, online, inside, wherever you are, our time is gone. I want to count one to three. Run like there's fire on the mountain. Don't wait for anyone. Make your way out quickly. Make your way out quickly. Are there people coming? Clear the way for them. Somebody has got to be convicted of the spirit. Young, old, make your way quickly. There are people coming outside. Please clear the way for them. Ushers, help them. Overflow, one, two, three. If you are coming, run, 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 run. Young and old, run quickly, please. Keep coming. God bless you. Our time is gone, but we must give you an opportunity for a fresh start tonight. Man of God, I want to rededicate my life. I'm tired of living my life my own way. Make your way to the front. No matter the limitations, God is giving you a new beginning. Are you coming? Don't let your friends stop you. Run, join them quickly. Hallelujah. If you're joining them quickly, just join them and then we'll pray. Those in front, I honor you. Thank you so much. Lift your right hand and say this after me. Convincingly, truthfully, you're not reciting a poem. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe in you. Tonight, I hand over my life to you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm a child of God from now and forever. Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. I pray that this will begin, the, you start the beginning of a new life. I command every spirit that is not of God to leave you. And I decree and declare that beginning from today, the life of God finds expression in you. I cause everything that does not belong to Christ. I release you to serve the Lord. I declare that your sins are forgiven and the Lord gives you a new beginning. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much and congratulations. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. All of you just follow him. They'll have your details very, very quickly. Hallelujah. Just two announcements for tonight. The first announcement, aside from Honorable and his wife, if this is your first time worshipping with us here at Koinonia Overflow 1, 2, 3, I know there are a number of people. Please, you will need to run. Aside from those coming out, wherever you are, come. I want to bless you. I want to speak over your life. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.